this pretty insane state of a um, thing happening development over the last couple of days that i've been completely unaware of because i guess i've been away and whatever um but nini h a very prominent dj i'd say within this new fast techno hardcore scene whatever it may be called which i don't think is fair to her because i think she is a little bit more genre fluid and has in my opinion is probably a more skilled dj than some of the people within that group and is somebody that's far more interesting to listen to i was first came across who she was mostly based on that um the toilet in berlin was it called whore or how have you even pronounced it i never know how to pronounce it but you know what i mean h-o-r um with the double apostrophes over the o i was mostly familiar with her via that platform and then later on because of some of her sets she might have done with um um possession which is a paris-based collective and also a release that she put out there jeremy that's where i kind of are familiar with her name but she put out this statement courtesy of instagram basically alleging that possession had been withholding payment from her in terms of the ep that she put out on there and it's been how distressing that has been dealing with a collective of people who kind of on one side of their mouth talk about representing the unrepresented because that's what they've done really in a good way they've kind of represented queer lgbtq plus people from you know misrep underrepresented um communities and give them a platform to play that type of music that probably doesn't necessarily get played in the mainstream on a really high level so you know we can't deny that it's not true that definitely is true and you'd imagine sometimes if somebody is if if somebody is if it's a person signing you looks like you maybe it's from the same place you're from or it's faced the same struggles you have in their own way you'd think maybe they'd kind of go out of their way to make sure that you feel as comfortable as possible and they also wouldn't want to do you as dirty as maybe some of the whites right let's just let's just talk about it plainly maybe have done um us minority people when we've been in the same position but it seems like for whatever reason the music industry doesn't matter if it's electronic music doesn't matter if it's r&b hip-hop gospel it doesn't matter the music industry is always going to music industry and there's something about that industry that just turns people who would sometimes be decent outside of it into terrible people once they're in it and i don't know what it is maybe it's the money maybe it's the prestige maybe it's the self-importance whatever it may be maybe it's all the above but there's something the music industry does to decent people that doesn't make no sense because i don't think this is something that just happened overnight this is definitely something that's been brewing in the background it's definitely i would imagine if you're a fan of position and you probably know those guys behind it you'd probably say maybe they've changed over the years that you've known them and um, it just happens i don't know why it music industry does it it contaminates everybody and unfortunately the person that always suffers the most is the artist and then of course the fans because you know if the artist isn't in a good zone to make music then we're not going to be serviced so it really is a lose-lose but anyway nini h made the following statement it's a bit long but i'm going to try and get through as much as i can this is as follows dear friends and family this message is from uh, my producer side i keep it 100 percent real since i started musically as well as personally I own up to my mistakes and I take things that don't work out with grace. Releasing music since 2017, I have really, I had really good and really bad and okay experiences with various labels. My focus has never been only one genre, so my music has been risky to release for the labels at times, which is why I respect labels that trust in my music and take financial risk, which is insane to think in it. Some labels don't like to put out releases from artists with their multi-genre. Like, how does that make any sense? isn't dj kicks and essentially that isn't it or most like i've listened to not even dj kicks what's his name jimmy jules has got an album out at the moment jimmy jules who signed to innovision it's called plus and there's like you'd you could easily say there's maybe six different genres covered on that album and if anything that makes him that should make him a more appealing person to book a more interesting producer to maybe think of in terms of if you're putting a project together some i'm sure that album will end up getting jimmy jules way more looks than if he just put out an entire album full of you know um amb uh, what, you, what do they call it is it ambient house whatever that genre is that they play do you know what i mean just sticking to one genre is really bizarre why would you do that especially if it's a producer maybe it's a dj it probably makes more sense as a dj if you want if you want to get really kind of anal about it but it still doesn't make sense regardless anyway, we continue we move 
But it's also clear to me that this is a business. Nothing wrong with focusing on the financials as well and, and think of what it sells, quote unquote. Nevertheless, I think that it is important not just to exploit producers, newcomers or artists my size, just because artists will gain gigs because of those releases. Ah, okay. She's saying that these labels are purposely withholding monies from their EPs that they're putting now because they're smaller artists and they're doing it under the guise of it doesn't matter anyway because you're going to still get booked off the back of this so even though we're not giving you what we owe you you're still going to make some money because you've got this release out you're going to make a lot more money maybe sometimes they'll maybe argue which i still think is scummy because if this money you owe this money you owe it doesn't matter what i'm going to get tomorrow i could i could win the lottery tomorrow you still owe me if i won the lottery tomorrow but you owe me 10 pound you still owe me 10 pound the principle is a principle especially if i especially if it's a service that i rendered to you and now i'm owed my fee or i'm owed my um, whatever right like pay your invoices just simple as that um just because artists will gain the, the it go it does not mean that those labels should allow themselves to be disrespectful towards these artists i have been ghosted my releases have gotten cancelled after a year and a half of waiting and generally communication has been the bigger labels can be really tough but I still keep my calm that being said, I want to point out that what that possession label has been by far the toughest of my nerves. The EP I released on last year sold out very quickly and it's still being played everywhere. The fact that a European person of privilege in the middle of the pandemic where I had needed the money, earnings thousands of euros from my own music and still not paying me just left me an extreme bad taste in my mouth awful not to mention that they are sold out of the records without sending me even one copy of the record that is classic music industry scumbaggery in it they sell out your entire record they don't pay you for it and then they don't even send you a couple just so you can have your own collection cool um, I also learned that this is an active choice of the label during working with the production, with the distribution, sorry. On top of this, I've been trying to have a conversation, but I'm being completely ignored. So they're ghosting her, of course. It is getting extremely disheartening to make further releases for me. Um, I have, I hope this message reaches the people and exploited artists speak up about it and their experiences. Also, I want to show that the, the, the way to newcomers, that this is not okay to be ghosted by labels you are working with. If you cannot build a good and genuine relationship with a label, don't give them your best music because they don't deserve it. And dear labels, please do not ignore your artists. Generally be interested in them as well as their music. We're all human beings at the end. Exactly. Especially when it comes to that, you would imagine part of the reason why you would want to be good with your artists is because you'd want them to create good work. So you want to be pally pally with them. You want to make sure that they feel good good about themselves and they're in a good mental space and that they feel loved and they feel welcomed and they're in a safe space and they can ask you whatever they need da, 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 so that you can get the best work out of them that's what you'd want and then and again as a human because you're in this weird you know dance electronic music scene that not a lot of people get it's just nice to have another comrade, comrade in, in arms that you can kind of moan about stuff with, talk about gossip about certain people. It's just a nice thing to have. So the fact that they go out of their way to just, you know, um, ghost people, ignore them, make them feel less than is really disheartening. Anyway, it continues. My last thoughts on finding solutions generally also for producers. One, artists and DJs, you can join um, a, sli a Slice where producers can be paid personally from DJs who are playing their music while touring. I think it's a really good alternative to this weird business. True. We generally um, have a struggle of delays on releasing vinyl, so maybe everyone should be explore. How else can we bring something to the table without being stuck with waiting for labels, distributors and other related businesses? Also, smaller businesses, record labels don't really make money on it so at all either, so there's a pressure there as well. Hope for, hope for fair work environment for all for artists that release music. Maybe the only way to kind of sort is just a self-release, especially if you're going to put out your own records and whatnot, or when you're maybe first starting out, just self-release as much as you can, and then maybe sign up with a partner, with a distributor to get the music out there in the right places, but just do it all yourself as long as you can, or if you can afford it, and even if you can't afford it, save up and do it, because it just sounds like an absolute headache doing it with these labels overall in it. Um, 
obviously the comments um on her post as follows miss kitten wrote as follows hi for support i'm french not the first time i hear that experienced it myself in the past and bad people using the word underground to abuse you whilst making money on it and killing it so shame exactly possession but you know kind of sell themselves as an underground dance collective which they probably were at one time now they've definitely you could they can't say that they're essentially you know the paris version of flipping boiler room to this to some extent um they're still doing good good work in terms of bringing up younger you know artists and people who probably didn't have a shot at making it but you know the facts are the facts so that's interesting to see that you know in the paris scene people are talking about them and how d dirty they do people in business Another person, Dave Clark, of course, he says, not surprised. They are renowned for an attitude that is not nice. So many people have told me about them in Paris. Be strong, awful. Another person, Ellen Alien, says, oh, no, this is, isn't respectful. Please clear the situation. Our techno community means to respect each other. Nini, so sorry to hear that. Wow. All the big dogs are coming out. DJ Rebecca said, this is not the first negative story coming out for possession that I've heard. A blight, different experiences. I'm sorry you have had to have a rough time. And thanks for your honesty and openness. I'm still waiting for your follow-up on the whatever. Duh, duh. Uh, Julian Mulia says, I'm really sorry to hear this, but definitely not surprised. It's also their way of treating newcomers and upcoming producers on the booking side. Stay strong. Oh, okay, they do it to, okay. They help you and more good labels. Hypactivist says, yes, BB, it had to be said. Now repeated until it can respect, hopefully start to see a change. More realness, less hype. Sending my love, be respect. I love that kind of catty stuff, right? More realness, less hype. I wonder why they're saying that. Why would you say that? Why would you say those kind of things concerning that kind of label? Julian Huxable came in. Loads of people have come out and supported um, Nini. Wow. Say this, sis. Sorry to hear this, and I hope they act expeditiously. Um, H HK Patch Babe say the same thing. Full support. Really fucking sorry to hear this. Uh, uh, Prada Monroe says, thank you for sharing. I am Patrick Mason says, don't let them, dr don't let them dim your light, babe. Big love and respect, though, to you. Another person says experiencing the same thing with them, still waiting for the contract to be signed and never received a copy of the vinyl I'm on. Holy shit. Another person, Jensen Helicopter, says, I'm with you on this way. Sis, I love you so much. Jensen Helicopter is another amazing producer, man. One of the best electro producers out there. Definitely check him out. Um, I love you so much. Thank you for having the courage to speak out about this. Horrible problems and broken situations. This toxic behavior of powerful labels, promoters, exploiting the valuable only for their own capitalists needs to stop. Position Techno, y'all need to do better. So absolutely strong words from them. And let's hear what Position Techno said in terms of response. They said as follows. We went on an adventure of the label during the period of pandemic without the having measured and extent the administrative work that is um uh administrative work that is represented. It was a spontaneous gesture which allowed us an artist to exist in the context of global confinement. Are they saying is this something that they wrote in French and then translated into English on Google or something? It sounds mad. It was never a question for us not to re remunerate the artists. Why are they using all these mad words? Just to, just, okay, um, not to remunerate the artists according to the agreements that we have concluded and the contracts that we have signed with them. There was never any question of minimizing their work, their talent, their music, or confidence they brought to us. We are aware that without these artists, our activity would not exist. Duh. To follow up on this artist, to follow up on artist Nini H statement, we agree that it is important not to exploit music producers. We did not know how to manage the essential work in the activity of a label, nor knew how to surround ourselves with the qualified people who could have prevented us from making these mistakes and failing so far behind and falling so far behind so on artist payments. We hope they will forgive they will forgive those deficiencies. We are committed to sending all artist royalty statements as soon as possible. We recently hired a full-time administrator as part of our team to manage these issues and administrative matters of our event productions with our sincere apologies. So they don't really say they're going to, I guess maybe you could say royalty statements, but they don't really say they're going to sort out the payments ASAP. Maybe they just don't have the funds to do so, but at least they fronted it and they put it up on their feed. They didn't hide it behind their Instagram stories and shit, but it is still concerning that they only did this because they got called out. That's the only thing that always bothers me about this sort of stuff. It's less so the response because the response is what it is. You have to basically say something and try to protect your back. But it's the fact that you never responded to me directly and you only responded when it started to get sticky for you on social media. 
and you don't want to look bad in front of your peers and whatnot people in the industry it's really really odd i don't really like all this um people in the comments saying shame to this there was a time and effort made for the promo artwork and staggered releases so i could imagine that paying the artist should be the first priority would be good to hear other artists feedback on the experience of possession releases um was it just nini h who experienced this unfortunately you won't hear much more from other artists because it requires a lot of bravery to say these sort of things because i would imagine when you say these things it probably does blackball you from the industry in some way i'm pretty sure there's things that i've said on this podcast that i don't even remember that have probably put me in a bad light or have maybe blackboard me to certain people that i probably have no idea it's been blackboard to unfortunately people in the music industry are just sensitive like that especially when they um when they partake in nonsense behavior they tend to not really take account for their own actions or self-reflect or try and change they'll just kind of point the finger at whoever is calling them out and basically turn them into the villain so the fact that she came out and said this is a big deal and it's also no coincidence that everyone came out and rallied behind her after she said it but they didn't come out and step out and say it when she was going through what she was going through do you know what i mean that's that's basically because to tell you everything you need to know about the music industry um another person said zero response to fans about missing merch to items too oh so they've been really running business terrible another person says please release the reggaeton hard techno dance mix with rosalia that sounds horrible why would you want that a reggaeton hard techno trance mix or is, or is that person making a joke and donate the profits to it oh, okay so i think they're making a joke and don't suppose played artists and interest rate or charity delay okay cool another person says hire the right people if you don't if you can't if you can't do the work as you are growing with a team of professionals um grow i know that many want to keep the team small i don't know shut up what you're saying there another person says and you want to say to me that you forgot to pay the artist another person here so yeah the response hasn't been great people are definitely not happy with what they're to say why apologize instead of just professional respect for the beginning exactly good point but yeah man um again i'm not surprised i think in general these labels they don't know what they're doing um these people in the music industry are always get corrupted especially when they get a little bit of success it's the kind of standard fable that kind of runs through the entirety of the music industry scene and for whatever reason dance music doesn't seem to be um doesn't seem to be immune to it it also happens to them too do you know what i mean there's something about this scene the community the industry overall it just turns people into horrible human beings where they'll do the most scumbag things to you where you legitimately can't pay your light bill you can't eat food you can't move you can't get public transport and they're withholding payment or ignoring you and ghosting you and here you are you know pretending to be the successful artist and keeping the image up or not trying to you know burn any bridges but you're legitimately your belly's hurting because you're hungry and they don't give a flying fuck it really is awful man but um big up nini h for speaking out anyway and really kind of letting people know what is really going on um and hopefully the change that needs to be done will end up happening hopefully we can only hope in it. Man can only hope.